Hopefully the bandwidth's okay. And we're live. <laughs> really excited about today. Welcome everyone uh, to Career Stories with me, Jo McCaddy. For those of you that don't know me, I'm the founder of Credit Science. I help people at a stage where they really want to move up in their career and they need a strategy and a career roadmap to get there. I ultimately empower people with the right tools to make that happen. Just a shout out to all those people thinking about making their next move. Now, today is not about me. <laughs> today is all about introducing the wonderful Roy Bellardi. I have been inspired to head up the Aussie division for what is classified as Jobs for Humanity, which we'll be talking to Roy about today. Now, Roy is a... <laughs> Roy is the Chief Marketplace Officer at PerkSpot. He's also the founder and the CEO of Jobs for Humanity, a movement that came about this year, but in fact, it was inspired last year from Jobs for Lebanon and then Jobs for Australia, which we will, of course, address in today's session. I'm delighted to have you with us, Roy. So before I go into so many questions, say hi to the audience. Hi, everyone. Thanks for dialing in and thanks for showing some interest in our story. Excellent. So for the viewers out there, wherever you're watching this live on the replay, I'm certain um, that you're all giving Roy a big welcome. So now let me pass it to Roy just to give a bit of a, a synopsis of how you got to where you are now. Over to you. It really started years ago when I migrated to the United States. Um, I was a bit of a loner in Lebanon and I loved the discovery and adventure, moved to the US from studying computer science and math and finance, like overachiever path, worked on Wall Street, uh, then realized it wasn't for me four years in to the financial crash of 08, 09. Then I started my own company because I didn't realize where I fit in the world, which was called Fresh Grad. I raised some money for it. It was all about identifying the right career paths based on your natural skills and natural interests. Uh, that failed. and uh, But at least the algorithm helped me find my next few jobs. Uh, one was at LearnVest. Uh, I ran operations there, or at least joined and then eventually ran it. Got acquired. Um, then I joined Smart Recruiters for six years. It was also a company at its infancy. Grew quite a lot to what I think most of you know by now. Um, and then Late last year, um, I founded Jobs for Humanity, started with Jobs for Lebanon because of the crisis in Lebanon, what happened. Basically, the banks shut down, let alone COVID, let alone the explosion, let alone the fact that there's no more gas or electricity in the country, so it's a decimated country. And so that was a breath of fresh air to be able to call onto the Lebanese diaspora to hire Lebanese in Lebanon, and that opened up the idea of a movement. Mm -hmm. And that turned into Jobs for Humanity, where like, drop the borders, and help people from all walks of life. But at the same time, uh, a few headhunters reached out to me earlier this year, and uh, I joined a company called PerkSpot, which is also has become uh, the central, a central point of my life, uh, where there it's a it's an employee discount program at the surface, so so that you know, employees can offer deep discounts to their uh, employees. But in the core and what completely drives me is that we're ultimately building a marketplace of buying almost anything you want to buy at a steep discount because there are so many members who are there and because so many people will live paycheck to paycheck. How cool would it be to be able to find college students and tell them here's a discount on your textbooks or on your student loans? And so there's a lot of uh, uh, a nice purpose that's you know, money oriented that allows people to to move on with their lives. So that's where I'm at. That's wonderful. That's really awesome. And um, yeah, it seems like you're making an impact there as well as with Jobs for Humanity and Jobs for Lebanon at the same time in parallel. So um, I just wanted to ask you, where are you right now? And, and, and there's a reason for asking that question. Where are you in the world right now? <laughs> at the moment, uh, San Francisco. Excellent. Now, you seem to travel a lot. So every time I catch up with you, you know, you were in Greece last time, you're in Portugal, then you're in Lebanon, and you're back in the US. So I'm sure many of them out there, as I want to know, like, how do you manage that? <laughs> how do you get around to travel so much? I think it's uh, actually not being intimidated to travel. Well, I, I caught COVID uh, and I'm vaccinated. So that helps. 
Yeah. Uh, and so my antibodies are pretty big. I don't get too close <laughs> to people. I, just before I travel, I read the guidelines. Don't go to a country where I have to quarantine. But at least there's so many countries where you just take PCR, you're vaccinated, you're good. Uh, but at the same time, from a work perspective, as long as you know you're clear-eyed about what it is that you need to do and you're results-driven, then you can actually get ahead of the curve, be ready for it. Like I spend my Sundays preparing for the week, which basically allows my week to be a lot more smooth sailing. And I just adjust the time zones. So when I work for the US being in Europe, everybody wakes up at 4 p.m. Yes. And the day ends at 10, 11 p.m. So I'm basically swapping day for night or night for day rather. So instead of being done with work at night, I'd much rather go for a swim in the morning, a workout, and then even prepare for my day. So it, okay. it does, it's not bad at all. Yeah, so it sounds like you've uh, set a specific routine that allows you to be able to do that. Fantastic. Good. Yeah, so um, I wanted to now know a little bit more about Jobs for Humanity. Just um, tell the viewers what the mission is all about and how you were actually inspired to create this movement. The mission is all about creating job opportunities for people who don't have access to them today. Yeah. And it could be any community. So some call them underrepresented, some call them overlooked, but basically it's people that didn't go to the typical universities that we're expecting, didn't go to the typical companies that we're expecting. Now, in the sake of focus, for the sake of focus, we started with six that are well-defined, where there's millions, in some cases, a billion plus people that where the unemployment rate is ridiculously high and where we have close friends there. So the six that we've started are refugees, single mothers, the neurodivergent, the blind, returning citizens from prison, and black leaders. All of those have an unemployment rate of twice to 10 times the national average or you know the global average. Um, and so, and that's by no means uh, the end. And our ultimate vision is by 2030, when world leaders come back together at the UN, uh, the United Nations, when they made a promise in 2015, created those sustainable development goals, is for Jobs for Humanity to be a or the leading contributor to sustainable goal number eight, which is quality jobs for all. That's mm -hmm. our North Star. Mm -hmm. I really resonate with that. And that's hence why we have set up Jobs for Australia, um, Jobs for Humanity in Australia, mm -hmm which we launched last week. And um, at the moment, we've got a lot of volunteers that have shown interest and we're sort of pushing things and progressing things forward. So um, we'll definitely be backing you and supporting you along this journey. Very excited about that. It's extraordinary. The team in Australia having, now we're at somewhere between oh, about 15 volunteers, yes. well-organized, so much heart and such good camaraderie. And even when it was Jobs for Australia, before becoming Jobs for Humanity, you know, the Australia chapter has gone through so much, especially during the pandemic when, yes. you know, life could be heartless, but actually finding community and common purpose is basically the reason why we're 50 plus volunteers around the world, uh, all volunteering yes. for this thing, for a common purpose. That's it. That's correct. So especially during this time, what I have found, people are really questioning what is their purpose. And usually they're tying their purpose to what they do in their work vocation. So Jobs for Humanity can fulfill that pillar of, you know, identifying that purpose, that sense of purpose and doing it through gift, the gift of giving, giving people the ability to, you know, find meaningful work from these underrepresented backgrounds. You know, they, they would have a harder time going through a hiring process. So the core team are definitely uh, recruiters, but we do have other disciplines that are supporting. So we're very excited about that. And we'll talk more about that in a moment in, in terms of how to get in touch and make a contribution yourself if you're wanting to. Now back to you, Roy, I'd really love to know now that you've given us a bit of a, you know, insight into how you got to where you are now with your career, you know, what the inspiration was be behind Jobs for Humanity, what do you actually consider to be the biggest achievement? in your life so far? <laughs> um, I, I, would, I would take it back to my time at, uh, well, professional achievement or life achievement? They're kind of fused, so over to you. It okay. Could be both. <laughs> um, 
I think I'll, I'll start with professional achievement, which was joining smart recruiters when it was no revenue, like no product market fit, brand new six years later for it to have to be such a strong powerhouse. And I've gained so much professionally and achieved like a product that I launched as a hundred million users. That going from zero to hundred million is pretty cool because it allows me to have a level of confidence. Um, and then from a uh, existential standpoint, Jobs for Lebanon, which is a precursor of Jobs for Humanity, has placed its 300th person in a job uh, a couple of days ago. And that's 300 livelihoods with their families now that have, you know, work and all that's done, you know, by, you know, donating time, donating money, and actually taking that know-how that I got from smart recruiters and other tech jobs and applying it here. So it's, uh, they're both recent and that feels good. Amazing. And usually uh, when we reflect on our achievements, we don't spend enough time celebrating. So just taking a moment now to say that's a wonderful thing and you should definitely celebrate that fact. So um, everything kind of led you to the point where you are now. Um, and that's quite exciting about what we can do uh, to support people out there. All right. So um, I want to know, uh, did you actually have someone who supported you throughout your career? Like, who was it that was instrumental in helping you along? I've always wanted to have a mentor. I hadn't had a mentor um, when I worked in, on Wall Street and then when I had on startup uh, and failed at a kid fresh grad. But then I found one as my first boss and the CEO of Smart Recruiters, Jerome Turnick, and he guided me. Uh, and he's been an advisor since for the last six, seven years. Mm -hmm. So big shout out to him. I think many of you in the recruiting space know him yes. or know of him. Uh, he's every bit as impressive as he sounds. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So what was it or what is it about him that, um, you know, you look up to and you're inspired by specifically? He drives a very straight and hard ship. He was in the military, he was in the French military. Uh, he was a lieutenant and when he had paratroopers and he would just throw them off the plane and then he keeps talking about how you kind of, you're part of a collective and then you kind of lose your sense of self and you become part of a team. That's mm -hmm. something that I really felt as we started to scale this product, mm -hmm. um, facing the work days, the greenhouses, the levers, and then realizing that you know you stay the course and you keep on building and then you build the right thing and you mm -hmm. take the time it takes to really build it right yeah. uh, instilling that that attitude was great and he's also helped me navigate from product to building the smart recruiters marketplace to acquiring startups to uh, running our event marketing or at least uh, you know a good chunk of it producing conferences mm -hmm. um, and then um, to giving me agency to start jobs for Lebanon jobs for humanity and at the time run smart recruiters nonprofit. So that was a lot of versatility given in the span of six years. Wow. Yeah, so once again, taking the framework of everything that you've learned and uh, I guess it's kind of like having a mentor or a coach without you know, the, yeah. given, being given the title. Yeah, and I think <clears throat> often we don't stop and reflect on, you know, who has been supporting us along this journey until you get asked the question. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. And then you don't realize that that was the mentor. Mm -hmm. So now just a little bit further into the defining moments in your career journey. So the moments where you felt like perhaps there was a challenge set before you and you probably felt as though <laughs> you didn't know what to do Failed. or couldn't yet. <laughs> Failed hard. Oh boy. Um, challenge number one is when I started uh, I have so many challenges. I'm going to start with my first job at like full-time job uh, after college on Wall Street. The financial crash happened and I was asked to put together the amount of subprime mortgages that we had on our balance sheets. I was an analyst of 23, 24 years old uh, and someone in upper management tried to lie and I I just couldn't just, I automatically reverted back to my morals mm. and I just couldn't, even though it wasn't clear that that was like the popular path, 
-hmm. And some people were just frozen. And I was like, I just looked him in the eye and I told him, I'm going to review my numbers. But if they're right, they're right. He fumed out, stormed out uh, on a more, uh, well, that could have been very painful for a lot of people had this like come out because it would have, the markets were just, <laughs> global markets were actually yeah. um, shattered. And then when I had my own startup, so at a personally more damaging note, I, uh, I founded a company uh, and with a person who I didn't properly vet and I didn't realize what kind of problem that could have caused. Yeah. We didn't, I didn't know about uh, vesting. And so ultimately was, you know, in a marriage with someone who, um, I don't even want to go into the details of how dark that was, but like preparing and researching. That same mistake of not proper researching and vetting, I made that mistake mm -hmm. when I pivoted the very first time from business to consumer, mm -hmm. fresh grad, to a business to business. And I, and I fell prey to the long, interminable sales cycles of enterprises. Um, and so these are our, our two failures. And then I found myself having, you know, failed at, at, at fresh grad with, I entered it with 50K and, you know, at 25 years old, that's wonderful, in the bank account and no student debt. Yeah. At 30 years old, I had $50,000 in debt, $2,000 in my name. And I was like, <laughs> how did I fall so low? And yeah. I was saying that to a friend of mine who never decided to get into Wall Street, even though he had the grades, he had everything he wanted, he instead became a musician. Uh, and, and I was like, how did I, like, how did I, how, how did I get here? Yeah. And that moment, that like vulnerable moment was all the resolve that I needed to kind of have that fire build up in me. And then, you know, crush next interviews, really have that resolve when I joined smart recruiters and then get, dig myself out of this hole. Wonderful. So, you know, from early on, you were always living and working to your values and, you know, you weren't going to compromise on that and I think it's important that you've done that throughout your career and may, you may have felt that that was a failure you had something then you didn't you lost it but who you became as part of that process I think has led to where you are today so I think yes that very cool defining moments that have um yeah got you to to here so um now that we've sort of you know got a bit of um more insight into you and your background and what's your what you've done in the past and what you're doing now moving forward tell us more about i guess what the intention is with jobs for humanity and you know the wonderful things that you suspect uh, that you will be doing as we progress through the rest of 2021 and and beyond yeah sure uh, i think the outcome of this is going to be um uh, it's very normal to hire somebody who can't see or who has low vision, or someone who is neurodivergent. Right now, people don't even know what that means. Yeah. Most people, yes. they, don't, they don't know how to hire for them. If they do, they don't know how to, you know, what are the reasonable accommodations. They kind of shy away and they're worried about somebody who was in prison. I understand, but then you can't paint everybody with one brush. So many people are in prison because they smoke pot. Mm -hmm. So many people are wrongfully convicted. Mm -hmm. One third of the US population who are black men ha, ha, were in prison. There's no way that a third of a population, like you're born as a criminal, no. Uh, there is systemic racism. And so it's only when you peel the onion and you tell yourself, all right, as a recruiter, I will admit that I actually never learned how to read a background check. And right now when I see one that says, hey, like to probe further, I err on the side of caution because I was never educated and therefore that's someone's life who could end up in prison again who I denied entry. So yeah. basically what's gonna happen is it's gonna be very normal to hire people from all walks of life. It's gonna be very accessible how to go from point A to point Z yeah. and how to, you know, diversity sourcing, inclusive hiring. The steps that we're taking to get there are just like you do in any marketplace. Mm -hmm. You're candidates, you got jobs and you're gonna connect them and have hires. So we're all, we've got main tasks on how to get more jobs how to reach more employers with the right training program, with the right sourcing program, how do you reach candidates uh, through partnerships with organizations directly online, and how do you get them hired with a team of volunteer recruiters who are connecting them, and how do you get the pro program in place, like the product, and keep it sustainable. So 
in all of that, what I have discovered and I've been learning about myself is I've been in the recruitment game for some time, right? And I've had many career conversations. And it does come from a place of, I guess, from having ignorance, and I will say that, to then getting the awareness. And that's what I feel Jobs for Humanity has done for us. You know, we've done training now, the cohort of 15, now 17, have done training for, you know, how do you hire a refugee? How do you hire a person who is considered blind or low vision? And how do you hire someone who's neurodivergent that you would otherwise have overlooked? And there are so many insights that came up and aha moments and made you feel a little queasy about how many people you may have rejected in a hiring process that could have been amazing just you know on the basis of a CV. So I guess it's, it's starting to ignite the thinking that as a recruiter, you have a fundamental role to play in a business right now where you are yeah. hiring talent. You have a, a job to do to include um, more than you have before. And you don't necessarily have to join a movement like ours, but if you want to be inspired and get some skills along the way and get some training to help you get there as a recruiter, then come and join us. But also, if you're looking for a role and you come from one of these backgrounds, we want to hear from you. We, we definitely want to help you move your career along. And um, associations and partnerships, you know, we're looking to expand into that area across Australia as well and with Roy across um, the global destinations. We are already starting to do some meaningful work and we want to do even more. So we'd love to um, now just pass it to you, Roy, to, to, to let people know how can they get in touch, how can they get involved in this if they're really wanting to make a change and a difference and learn some things along the way, yeah, what do they need to do? There's a home for you. This is a global movement of job creation for underrepresented communities. A global movement that means that there's a place for everyone. Everything is super clear on the site, actually. So on jobsforhumanity.com, you understand the why, the what, and then how you can get involved. Uh, and, then, and then you'll be able to dive further. So I would just point you to one site, jobsforhumanity.com, and you'll find the place there. In there is a direct contact for all of us. And so you'll also be able to reach out to us. You'll be able to volunteer through it. You'll be able to find the different job sites. You'll be able to apply as a candidate. You'll be able to, uh, and very soon, get the training all online uh, or even post a job as an employer. Or potentially reach out to us so that we could form a partnership and import your jobs into Jobs for Humanity and start something a bit more formal if you're up for it. Yeah, that sounds wonderful. And on that note, it's actually been quite wonderful to have you with us, Roy. Thank you so much for squeezing in your time. I know I really, you know, um, you know it's you, the Joe. end of your day. I'm excited about the impact that you are making and in turn we are making because we're backing this and equally the people that we're going to be impacting and, and who are inspiring along that journey, having launched Jobs for Humanity across Australia as well. So audience, feel free to follow Roy here on LinkedIn and wherever else. Uh, we do have a Facebook as well for Jobs for Humanity and, and an Instagram. Follow Jobs for Humanity as well as Jobs for Humanity Australia. And to find out more, as Roy mentioned, go to www.jobsforhumanity.com. Is that right, Roy? Yeah. And check out how you can assist in the myriad of ways that Roy had suggested right now. So before I sign off, I want to give once again huge thank you to Roy for his time, his vision, his mission. And on behalf of J JFH Australia and, of course, J Jobs for Humanity globally, we're very grateful to come along and support you uh, on this journey. And now next week, I will be running a LinkedIn Live workshop and it's going to help people figure out how to create their career roadmap. So come along to that. It's Wednesday at 12.30. Just look out for that. But for now, before we sign off, I'll just pass to Roy to say a final ta-ta for now <laughs> until next time. Well, all I wanted to say is that the movement really is led by the people who join it. And so if this speaks to you, if this, if creating an opportunity for someone is something that, you know, you like, this is a life worth living. And, you know, if life ended, then this would have been really worth it to have gotten a job just for one person who didn't have the same chance I had. Yeah. Uh, it's well worth it. So definitely join in. And what I'm trying, all I'm trying to say by this is that thank you so much for like, you know, being thankful of my time, but in reality, it's, all the volunteers who said, hey, um, you know, the everyone who follows and says, I'm, I'm in, brings this 
to life. We're as fragile as not dialing into a Zoom call altogether whenever we have a meeting, but as powerful as really changing human behavior and bringing the human back to human resources. Mm. Perfectly said. And on that note, thank you once again. Thank you to all the volunteers, as Roy mentioned, and we look forward to what comes of this. It's very exciting. Enjoy your evening, Roy, and take care, Thank everybody you, else. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye.